Maggie from backtothelandliving.com. Today I want to show you how to make applesauce. So this morning a friend of mine called and invited me up to her house to make some applesauce and so I thought I'd show you how she makes it and all her steps to making homemade summer applesauce. My friend's name is Louise and she lives up the road from me. She's my grandmother's best friend and I have a lot to learn from Louise. She is a great gardener and a great cook and she does a lot of preserving. So she's been teaching me uh, each year, each fall some new preserving things and so this year she's teaching me applesauce. I've made it a few times with her before and I love it. It's really delicious. But I thought this year that I'd show you how she makes it so you can learn how to make homemade applesauce too. So these are the mulba apples, they're what we use, and they're on the trees behind me here. And so we pick them off the ground usually, they're easier to pick that way, but um, it doesn't really matter as long as you get softer varieties of the apple. So these ones are, they're hard apples, but they're like a soft variety, so like a mulba or a macintosh would work well. And what we do is we pick them off the ground, and it's okay, like this one has a worm gross area, or if it's bruised, we just cut that off and use the good part, so they don't have to be perfect, because it's becoming applesauce. And so we collect our apples, and then we take them back to the kitchen. So once you have all your apples collected, you're going to take them back to your kitchen and um, clean the apples. So we rinse them off, just in some cool water, and then we cut them in half and we cut the blossom end off, so like the bottom part, not the stem, the other side of the apple, we cut that part off and then we cut the apple in half and cut out anything that was bruised or worm area and then we put the good parts in a pot and once you have your pot full, we fill the pot halfway with water and then put it on to the stove to simmer. So the amount of water that you're going to use is depending on how um, moist your apples are. If they're quite a dry apple, you might want a little bit more, but if your apples are pretty moist, it's rained a lot that season, then you maybe use a little less. And it also depends on how smooth and runny you want your applesauce to be. And so we put it onto the stove and we brought it to a boil, and once it was boiling, we left it there for about five minutes. But that again will depend on the type of apple you're using. So you want it to boil until they're soft, so you take a knife or a fork and put it in, and if they feel nice and tender and soft and mushy, then your apples are done. So after your apples are soft and have been boiled, while they're still warm, you want to strain them. And so you can use any strainer you have, but for this, Louise uses a food strainer and sauce maker. It's a machine she has. I absolutely love it. And what it does, you put the food in the top, and so we put the apples uh, that have been softened up top and you push them down and you turn the crank and then it pushes it through the machine and it pushes it through a sieve and that strains out your apples and it actually separates your apples from your applesauce. So you have the core and the peelings left over that go into a bowl at the end and you have your pure applesauce left. One really great thing about straining your applesauce is that you don't have to peel them or core them initially. So the reason you don't have to do that is because after you've boiled it down, you're going to put it through a strainer and it gets out all the seeds, all the skins, all the stuff that doesn't go into your applesauce. And because you're able to boil it with the skin on, that red color goes into your applesauce and you end up with a nice pink applesauce instead of a white applesauce. After it's been strained while it's still warm, you are going to add your sugar and your spices. And so to this, we added a teaspoon of nutmeg and plus sugar. So we did sugar to taste. Our taste was high in sugar. <laughs> we liked the nice sweet ones. Louise likes her sweet applesauce and so do I. And so for every eight cups of applesauce, we added a cup of sugar. Now you don't have to put this much sugar in. It's, that's higher on the sugar end, but um, you just put as much in until you like the taste. I would recommend starting with a lower amount and then adding it until you like the flavor. And you want to do this while the sauce is still hot, or at least warm, so that it'll dissolve the sugar and it'll just be a nice texture. And so once you have your applesauce sweetened and flavored to your liking, it's time to put it into containers. Just put it in any container you have. Make sure if you're going to preserve it for the year that you leave some head space. We just left enough space, like a quarter of an inch to a half inch at the top, so that when it freezes, the food can expand and it won't break through your container. 
So we put the applesauce into our containers and then we put it into the freezer and it will keep in the freezer for at least a year, probably longer, Louise thought. But it's a great way to preserve your apples for the year. So that is how we make applesauce. I hope that you've learned something and I'm so thankful that Louise allowed me to show you guys all how she makes applesauce and it is delicious. I hope you'll have a chance to make some yourself. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.